Hello and welcome to the sixth video in this series, Programming a JavaScript Chess Engine. So first things first in this video, in board.js I made a mistake last time. I forgot to put the S on the end of color, but I corrected the code that's available for download, so sorry about that. But something else I've done here is I've added on a new array inside game board called material, and this is indexed by white and black. There are two slots in this array, and will hold the value of the material of each side in the given position. If you go into defs.h, I've added in some arrays here and I'd recommend simply downloading the code and copying and pasting these in because they're a pain to type out. I've added these in, you'll see, at the bottom of defs.h. And these are simply filled with bool.false or bool.true, all of them but these two here, simply to say, is a piece a big piece, so i.e. a non-pawn, a major piece, queen or rook, a minor piece, a bishop or a knight, here I've got what's the piece value, and value is always given in chess programs in hundredths of a pawn. So a pawn has a value of 100, so that's one pawn. And knights, bishops, 325, 550 for a rook and 1,000 for a queen. The piece colour here indexed by piece, say whether it's a white or a black piece. And then here I've got the true and false again for is the piece a pawn, a knight, a king, a rook or a queen, a bishop or a queen, and does the piece slide? So all these arrays are simply indexed by our piece constants, which you remember from up here, go from naught for empty up to 12 for a black king. And the reason I've got these in is simply a little bit of convenience and speeding up some of the code later on when we're generating moves and evaluating the position, so it becomes easier by a direct lookup just to know what kind of piece we have, what value it is, or what colour it is. So in this video we're going to start having a look at Piecelist. And if you can hear an alarm going off in the background, I'm really, really sorry, but it's been going off somewhere else all day and somebody seems to have absolutely no control over it, so I apologise. So piece lists, what are they? Well, if you think about how we would maybe want to generate moves in our position, we would need to loop through our board and find if the, look if there's a piece on a board. So we would do something like, and this is just Swedoco, loop pieces array and if piece on square equals side to move then gen moves for square so simply that saying we loop through all of our pieces array up here and for each of the squares we say is there a piece on it and if there is is it the same as the side to move, the same colour as the side to move, then we can generate all the moves for the sorry piece on square. The slight problem with this is is even if we make do something clever and make a 64 square array to transfer between the 120 square array, so we only loop through 64 squares on the actual board at the pieces each side will have at most 16 pieces on the board out of the 64 squares and on average in a game I would say there are around 10 pieces per side so 54 of the squares you loop through will be empty uh, or have a piece of the opposite side in so you'll be doing a lot of unnecessary looping and checking before you actually find where your pieces are so a much better way to do this is actually to hold a piece list and to do this we need a couple of things one, we need an array which keeps track of our piece number. So how many of each piece type we actually have. And this is indexed then simply by the piece. So for example, you remember the white pawn is a 1, or the white bishop is a 3. And now we need to do something slightly more complicated. We need to think about how we might store this list in a 1D array, so a one-dimensional array. And the way we're actually going to do it is we're going to make a list, and I'll just go down a little bit more and see if I can describe this. We're going to index, what we want from our piece list is, for a given piece, we want to know what square that piece is on. So we can get this square that was described here out of our piece list. So we're going to have a piece list array and at its given index so index it'll gives the square 
or in other words, square of piece equals our piece to list array at a certain index. And it's this index that we need to calculate. Well, an easy way of doing this index is if you think about how many pieces we have, we have 0 for empty up to 12 for a black king. And we can have at most 10 or on a chessboard of one particular piece type. It'd have to be a freak situation, but for knights, rooks and bishops, theoretically a side could promote all of his pawns, eight of them, to that piece type, and then end up with ten knights, rooks or bishops on the board. You could end up with nine queens, can't promote to king, pawns maximum of eight. So we need some way of storing in a 1D array, in a list, the uh, maximum capacity of all the piece types. And the way we're going to do this is, if I take the example with a white pawn, and then let's take then an example with the white knight which follows it directly. So white pawn is worth, it has a value of 1. And then there can be up to 10 of a piece type maximum. In the case of pawn 8, but it, it could be 10 because I've already said the knight, bishop or rook can have 10 on the board. So we want an array, the white pawn index to start somewhere and then have the, the next 10 or the next nine after the, or ten including the starting one, next ten spaces available for storing the squares the white pawns are on. So what we can do is we can say we'll take the white pawn multiplied by ten and then we simply add the piece number or let's say the poor the white pawn number to get our index and then we can say the white knight exactly because starts at white knight times 10 and then we add the white knight number and this number here is simply a zero based index of num of pieces from game board piece num So if that's not clear, then I'm going to write out a, di in a direct loop now, just describe it. Let's say we have four pawns, and we'll call them white pawns, four white pawns. That means that game board piece num of white pawns equals four. And we want to get the square from our piece list array of each of these white pawns. So we would do something like, I'll just move this all down a little bit. We will say four and we'll say piece number equals naught, piece number is less than game board piece number white pawn, which you know is four, and plus plus piece num. I'm sorry if you've already got the idea of this, but I just want to make sure it's absolutely clear. And now we simply have to say that the square is equal to our piece list array index of white pawn times by 10 plus the piece num. And then that will basically then give us the square for each of the pawns because we would have the square of pawn number one is at zero, white is at white pawn times ten plus zero, we would have times ten plus one, times ten plus two, and times ten plus three. And that will give us then squares one to four for each of the four white pawns in this array. And the reason we do this multiplication like this here is because then the indexes never cross over each other. So because a white pawn has a value of one, a white pawn's index starts at ten and then we'll go up to 19 and then the white knight will start at 20 and go to 29 and you get the idea because obviously there's a maximum of 10 pieces. So we want to make this piece list array part of our game board structure and the way we're going to do that oops, what have I done there? and the way we're going to do that is simply call it a p list like this and make it a new array 
and make darn sure we have enough space in there. We'll make it 14 by 10. And the only other thing we're going to add on then here is a convenience function to do this getting the index of the piece which we have here. And I've already written a function out which I've put in capital letters because it behaves a bit like a macro and I'll put it above the game board definition and it's called piece index and it returns our piece multiplied by 10 plus the piece number in the list. Okay, so I'll leave all this sort of rough explanation here inside the code here for this video so you can actually maybe have a look through it and understand how it works. It shouldn't be very complicated to know, but what it means is if we have eight pieces on the board, then we're only going to do eight lookups in our array to find out where that piece is to generate the moves, rather than looping through all of the squares on the board. And it gives you a rather large speed up, especially in the move generation and the position evaluation. So that's it for this video. Thanks very much for listening. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.